Um, so our next speaker will be uh, Talalon, and she will uh, talk about typed contract design. Um, okay, so uh, my name is Talalon. I'm a master's student at the Technion, advised by Inbal. And this is based on joint work with uh, Paul Duding, Inbal, and uh, In Kaili. And I will mention uh, some wor joint work with Ron Lavi and Alicia Vashamash from Technion. Um, so with the increasing demand for uh, platforms like uh, freelancing platforms and crowdsourcing platforms comes the demand for algorithmic contract design. And in particular, contract design that accounts for uncertainties introduced by moving to these massive online platforms. Uh, such uncertainties include uh, the hidden uh, characteristics or types of uh, different uh, parties in the contractual relationship that is now done uh, rapidly, quickly, and uh, remotely. So we have less idea who, who stands behind the screen. And this is what I want to talk about today and we'll be taking perspectives from both contract theory and mechanism design. So uh, just to have some running example, I'll be uh, thinking of uh, influencer marketing, but these ideas apply to many uh, other areas. So uh, we have some uh, brand that hires an influencer. An influencer is uh, some individual with uh, many uh, dedicated followers on social media. And the brand hires the influencer to promote the, the brand uh, using product mentions and uh, reviews and so forth uh, on social media. And obviously the principal agent play, uh, model plays a role here, but I think you see where I'm going the, with this. There are a variety of different uh, influencers with different uh, uh, marketing capabilities. And it is not surprising that it's uh, ridiculously easy to fake your uh, followers or your likes and views. So those um, different marketing capabilities capabilities become more and more privately known uh, to the agents. And on the other side, uh, there are uh, different brands with different, um, uh, with different interests that are uh, hiring a single uh, influencers. So they affect the, the influencer's choice. Um, so uh, at the very high level, we have two uh, different misalignments. Uh, one is the uh, hidden action from contract theory, where the uh, principal cannot monitor the agent and see the uh, effort it puts, uh, he puts in. And on the other side, it's uh, the hidden type from mechanism design. And while uh, most uh, theory distinguishes between the two, we're going to try to combine the two and see how they interact. And we'll uh, do this by uh, considering uh, one problem at the intersection uh, of the two. Um, so just to give a, 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 a formal model of the principal agent. Uh, so this is the classic principal agent model of Grossman Hart. Um, the graphical uh, view here is, uh, is inspired by uh, uh, Manish and, uh, and the paper by Manish and uh, uh, um, John Kleinberg. Um, and and uh, we have a set of actions. Uh, each action uh, is, uh, the agent has a set of action. Each action uh, is associated with a cost and a distribution over observable outcomes. And uh, each outcome is associated with a reward to the principal. And the timeline is as follows. We have some action that the principal wants to incentivize the agent to take. So some action that he wants the uh, agent to take. And uh, to do this, he sets forth some uh, payment scheme to incentivize the agent to do so. Uh, then the agent takes some hidden action. This action need not be the recommended action by uh, the principal. Um, then some reward is realized based on the, uh, on the distribution of our outcome. Uh, the principal gets the, the reward and the agent uh, gets the prescribed payment by the payment scheme. And the, the utilities that determine the action and the contract are as follows. So the agent maximizes, chooses the action that maximizes her uh, payment minus, uh, expected payment minus cost. 
and the principal maximizes uh, the revenue, which is uh, the reward minus cost, the expected reward minus cost, given the uh, uh, recommended action, um, subject to the constraint that the recommended action indeed maximizes the agent's utility. And we'll call an action uh, implementable uh, if there exists a contract that incentivizes the agent to take that action. Okay, and now just to have an outline of what we're going to discuss, so we'll uh, be, uh, we'll focus mainly on uh, the case where agents have types, and we'll consider uh, just as a first step a single agent with a single, uh, with a single parameter type. Uh, this is uh, more related to um, uh, works uh, on mechanism design in auctions where we have uh, a single parameter evaluation for the bidder. Um, then we will see a characterization of the design space and we'll see that it has some counterintuitive uh, characteristics. Um, and we'll see that despite those counterintuitive characteristics, linear contracts, the simple, uh, the simple most popular uh, class of contracts, uh, are actually going to be uh, near optimal. And I'll also mention, if I'll have time, uh, uh, the, the work of, on typed principles, uh, where we have a set of principles that hire a single agent and things get more involved uh, uh, as well there. So I'll uh, start with the typed agents. Um, so um, obviously the model needs uh, uh, some uh, change. So uh, we have, uh, we'll assume the Bayesian assumption uh, that uh, we have some public, publicly known distribution uh, over a type set uh, of the agents. And the uh, principle maximizes the expected revenue uh, with respect to the outcomes and the uh, distribution over, uh, over types. And we'll allow the contract to depend on the different types by uh, having a generalized notion of a contract uh, which is going to be a mapping from uh, types to payment schemes and from types to recommended actions. So the principle at first sets forth this mapping uh, and this is the direct revelation uh, notion of a menu of contracts. Uh, then there is some type report, the agent reports uh, the type, some uh, payment scheme is fixed and the game proceeds just as before. And we will say that uh, an allocation will, uh, just forgot to mention that the two mappings, the mapping from uh, the, the types to payment scheme and the, the mapping from uh, types to actions will be referred to as payment rules and payment rule and implement and allocation rule uh, respectively. So an allocation rule uh, is implementable uh, if there exists a payment rule that incentivizes uh, the agent to be uh, truthful and uh, take the, the allocated action by the, by the allocation rule. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, our model of type, as I mentioned, is uh, a single parameter uh, type. There is also really exciting work uh, that I think Josh will present later uh, on multi-parameter types. Um, and uh, we actually are going to uh, resemble to a uh, single uh, parameter type in auction design where, uh, where the single parameter is the value per uh, unit of effort. Here it's going to be uh, the cost per, uh, the value per unit of good. Here it's going to be the cost per unit of effort. So actually uh, types are, the actions are going to, uh, instead of have uh, costs, it's going to have, uh, uh, it's going to be associated with the number of units of effort it requires from the agent. And then different agents with different costs per unit of effort will, be, uh, will uh, bear different costs with, um, with respect to their private parameter. So uh, just to have uh, an example, if, uh, if uh, some type C, let's say uh, type C has a cost of, a private cost of three, and he takes action uh, I, which bears uh, five units of effort, then the overall cost uh, this type bears from taking this action is going to be 15. Um, and just to position our work with respect to uh, um, related work, then 
in the known type uh, hidden action, it's the classic uh, principal agent model by Grossman Hart. In the single dimensional type and the known action, it is, um, it is, work, it is the work, uh, seminal work by uh, Myerson. And our work actually uh, generalizes between the two and um, considers both hidden type and single dimensional type. And as I mentioned before, uh, Josh will present uh, multi, multi parameter uh, uh, types and hidden action. Okay, um, so now that we have this, we can start uh, analyze the design space and understand what kind of uh, allocation rules can be uh, implementable and how can we even uh, and how can we implement them. So um, using uh, the, the single uh, parameter is going to kick in uh, kick in here, and we can use a Myersonian approach to show that. Uh, every implementable location rule must be monotone. So monotonicity is uh, necessary for uh, Im Im implementability of an allocation rule. Just to uh, have uh, to, to uh, define what is a monotone allocation rule. So um, here is an example uh, of monotone allocation rule. So on the x-axis is uh, the type, on the y-axis is the unit of effort allocated to the type, and uh, monotone allocation rule means that as the type is uh, larger, as he's less, uh, less suitable for effort intensive tasks, then the number of units of effort allocated uh, to him are going to be uh, lower. So this is uh, the notion of monotonicity in, in this model. And while uh, monotonicity is necessary, it is no longer sufficient. Um, and actually it's, it's we can still uh, get over this and we can still get a sufficient and necessary condition by uh, considering instead of uh, mechanism design tools, uh, contract design tools. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, consider uh, some monotone allocation rule and take the set of the breakpoints imposed by this allocation rule. And then uh, we can show that the problem of computing whether or not the allocation rule is implementable reduces to the problem of competing whether or not uh, the allocation rule for the set of breakpoints is implementable. And uh, we can use a linear program to do, to do this. This linear program has some uh, 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 relation to the linear program of implementable actions and a minimum payment LP from contract design. And I won't get into the details of uh, this um, this linear program, I just uh, want to have the understanding of using both, uh, my, uh, both mechanism design uh, tools and then contract design tool to combine and, and solve this or understand this problem. Uh, so actually by taking the dual of uh, this uh, linear program before, we get uh, uh, the following characterization of implementable allocation rules. And before getting into the characterization, I want to um, say that uh, a nice corollary of this whole uh, approach is that we have uh, a polynomial time algorithm for computing the revenue maximizing uh, uh, contract uh, when the number of actions is constant. And this is in contrast to a hardness established by um, the work of Gurg and Schneider and Wong, where they show that it is hard to compute uh, the revenue maximizing contract when, even when uh, the number of actions is, is constant um, with where types are multi-parameter. Um, so just to have an uh, idea of the characterization, so uh, some allocation rule is implementable if um, there exists no deviation from the agent for of the agent from the allocation rule, so meaning they can take any action that is not the prescribed action by the allocation rule, such that uh, the agent jo can join forces, the whole type space can join forces, and get um, high, higher distribution, higher uh, rewards uh, for uh, higher rewards, higher expected rewards by the actions that they take together from the deviation, and strictly lower joint costs. And I'm slightly cheating here, but uh, this is a weaker, uh, a weaker um, condition than the, 
uh, condition itself, but it would be useful to show that, uh, like give an example why uh, monotonicity fails. Um, so uh, here we can, uh, we have an example where uh, the allocation rule is implementable, but it's not, it is monotone, but it's not implementable. So uh, we have uh, three actions uh, that correspond to three levels of effort, uh, low, medium, and high. Um, the, low, uh, the action with low effort bears uh, no cost, uh, no units of effort. The medium uh, action t uh, bears epsilon units of effort, and the um, high action bears uh, one half units of effort. And the, uh, the distributions of our outcome are as follows, and the, um, we have two uh, rewards. Uh, the, first is, uh, uh, zero, the first reward is uh, zero, and the second reward is 10. Um, so the, low, uh, the, low action, the lower action gives us uh, uh, zero expected reward, the medium action gives us five expected reward, and the high action gives us 10 expected reward. So we're going to have two types. Uh, one is a weaker type with high cost per unit of effort, which is going to be one over epsilon. And the second is a stronger type, uh, which, which uh, has a, a lower cost per unit of effort, and it's going to be one. So for this example, the allocation rule where both types take uh, the medium uh, level of effort uh, gets a, a reward of five plus five, so 10, and a cost of one plus epsilon. However, um, despite having every action uh, in, this, uh, in this example implementable when there is just a single type, when there are two types, when there are the, the two agents, uh, they can uh, uh, take the following deviation. So the weaker type is just, uh, it's just not, not working at all, and the uh, stronger type gets the works uh, a bit uh, a bit more, and we get the same expected reward, but we get a uh, strictly lower joint, joint cost of, from, the, from this deviation. So, uh, so we get that the, uh, by the characterization, this allocation rule is no longer implementable. Monotonicity is not, uh, is not sufficient. It's just necessary. And I would like to give a high level idea of why we uh, think that uh, monotonicity is not, uh, or some intuition of why monotonicity is not, uh, no longer uh, sufficient. Um, so it will be useful to consider instead of, uh, uh, instead of the, the mapping from uh, contracts to, from types to contract, a menu of contracts. So uh, we have a menu of payment schemes from which the, the agent can choose from. And when there is no hidden action, then given any option of the menu, given every payment, uh, it's just a payment for one action. So uh, the utility of the principle given this payment is going to be linear in the, in the cost, in the single parameter cost. So uh, overall, the utility of, of the menu is going to be uh, um, maximum over linear functions. So it's going to be a convex function, and by this we have that uh, monotonicity is necessary, and it's always it's only it's, and it's also go going to be uh, um, th this max over linear function is going to allow us to set payments that uh, make the make monotonicity also uh, sufficient, uh, because we can always set payments to uh, make the the utility curve aligned with uh, a utility uh, aligned with the uh, with the allocation rule. Um, when there is hidden action, then actually for every uh, option of the menu, uh, the the every option of the menu gives us a, a payment for multiple different actions, and then the utility of the agent given uh, some option of the menu given some payment scheme is going to be a convex function, so a maximum over linear function itself. And then the utility given the menu is going to be a maximum over convex functions. And while monotonicity is still necessary, it is no longer uh, uh, sufficient because we need some 
uh, guarantees on what those convex functions look like so we can have payments to satisfy them. Um, and actually, the fact that the, uh, in fact, the fact that monotonicity is not uh, sufficient in contrast to uh, Myerson is not the only thing that uh, gets uh, more, uh, more complex here. So we see that the, design, the entire space of optimal mechanisms or optimal contracts or uh, implementable allocation rule has some counterintuitive um, characteristics. Uh, for example, um, uh, while in uh, Marison, uh, maximizing virtual welfare is, uh, is optimal, um, in our model, virtual welfare, the virtual welfare maximizing allocation rule uh, is, now, is not on, always uh, implementable. Uh, we see that uh, there is a large, uh, a large and arbitrarily large uh, menu complexity uh, of the optimal contract, even for a constant number of actions. So when in a single principle, single uh, agent case, the principle needs to transfer um, a small amount of information because of the having a small amount of outcomes, uh, here uh, the, the menu complexity uh, can increase uh, a lot. And another thing we observe is that the entire Type space has some uh, has non-monotonicity, meaning that if we add stronger types, so uh, types with uh, lower cost, um, it actually hap sometimes happens that the revenue of the principal uh, decreases, uh, despite the intuition that it feels like th those types have lower uh, costs. It should be easier to incentivize them, but then again, because of the incentive constraints and the way that this uh, uh, and the structure of the mechanisms, uh, it happens that the revenue actually decreases. And despite all of this, uh, this uh, undesirable characteristics, uh, we can show that linear contracts, which are uh, the simple, most popular class of contracts where the principal just uh, transfers some fraction of the reward to the agent, uh, are uh, near optimal. So for uniform distribution, linear contracts are exactly optimal. For every distribution of our types with decreasing uh, density, for example, exponential distribution, linear contracts achieve a two-factor approximation. And in general, linear contracts uh, give uh, an N approximation where N is the number of outcomes, uh, of actions, sorry. And this is uh, in contrast, again, to the multi-parameter uh, model of Guru Ganesh Nader and Wong, where they show that the approximation guarantee of linear contract can be unbounded even for a constant number of actions. Um, so, um, and, and this whole work on a linear program it, uh, and linear uh, contracts actually continues the line of a linear versus optimal uh, uh, area started by uh, Milgram at, and Holmstrom at 87, continued by Carroll at uh, 15, and during uh, Rothgarden and Talgam Cohen at uh, 19. And while most of the results on linear versus optimal study are sort of a max mean results, so the worst case uh, analysis, here we identify um, conditions under which we can give uh, guarantees that are much stronger than the worst case guarantees. And I won't get into, yeah, I won't get into um, uh, multiple principles. Um, may, five minutes, I have time? Okay, so um, I, I will get into multiple principles. Um, so uh, in the multiple principle uh, case, we have uh, multiple brands that hire a single uh, agent. Um, the principals have different interests on what the uh, the agent uh, on on the agent's action, and our objective obviously is to maximize uh, revenue. But it's not quite clear what is the definition of revenue in in these cases. And we'll we'll start by uh, asking uh, for welfare and see what what we can even uh, achieve uh, on this uh, on this objective. So. We show that it is sometimes impossible to have any uh, 
uh, any contract that, any mechanism that uh, maximizes uh, the social welfare. Uh, however, the class of settings where uh, it is possible to, to maximize social welfare is, um, is large and is identifiable by uh, some uh, condition, uh, sufficient and necessary condition. And for this class, uh, we can uh, do welfare maximization um, using uh, some new uh, notion of uh, algorithmic contract that allow us the flexibility that may not exist using a closed form formula contract. And just to have a, a quick summary, so uh, we mainly saw the, the typed agent case and we saw that single dimensional uh, type uh, can really uh, uh, help uh, in contrast to multi-dimensional types. And this is aligned with uh, single dimensional versus uh, multi-dimensional in uh, traditional mechanism design. Uh, we saw a characterization of the entire uh, solution space and saw that it has some counterintuitive uh, structures because of the combination between contract theory and mechanism design. Uh, but we also saw that it could be uh, it could be, um, like we can uh, overcome this by using uh, uh, linear contracts. And I think the whole, um, the whole point here is just to uh, uh, get the idea that the, the intersection may have, we might have more, more tools on the uh, one hand, but uh, we also have more constraints on the other hand. And we need to, there's some interplay between uh, when do we use uh, contract theory tools, when do we use mechanism design tools, and when do, you use, do we use new tools to solve this uh, new uh, exciting uh, problems. And as a very high level uh, future directions, one of the many. Um, so we can consider settings of uh, when principles have types and agents have types. Uh, we can consider settings where there are multiple agents with types and the multiple agents with types interact with each other. And we can also consider some other notions of simple uh, contracts that, uh, that, give, uh, an, that give good approximation and overcome those uh, really um, complex uh, characteristics of, uh, of the optimal contract in this intersection. And yeah, that's it, thank you. back there so I think um, yeah so in in classic um, in, in classic uh, uh, mechanism design the utility of the agent is going to be just giving him a single uh, uh, single option of the mechanism uh, is going to be linear and then um, the utility of the menu is going to be a maximum over linear uh, functions and I won't get into why this is sufficient and necessary for monotonicity, but um, in, in our model, it's going to be a maximum over uh, convex uh, functions because every, uh, every option actually introduces a convex function of uh, the, pay the payment scheme introduces a convex function. And when this happens, then um, monotonicity is no longer uh, sufficient because we need that the we need to find convex functions that, um, uh, that are constrained to some curvature constraint so that it could be aligned with the allocation rule. And this no, no, not always can, can be found. And this is why the, the traditional tools of mon monotonicity and uh, virtual welfare maximization is going to be uh, 
not, not going to work anymore.